In this video, I'm going to show you how to crop an image to a different aspect ratio, specifically how to crop to a square. I'm also going to show you how to quickly straighten a horizon line. You can open this image from the link in the description or download it in the course. Once the image is open, come and choose the crop tool. Always going to go to ratio or original ratio. It's putting a bounding box automatically around it. And if I grab one of the corners with my cursor, see, I can drag it in. And notice how it's maintaining the original ratio is indicated by the tool options bar, which means no matter what I do, it's going to stay at that same format of width to height as far as ratios go. Now, if, if I want to do something different, if I want to freehand it, I can grab just ratio and then I can make it any size I want. Now, right now it's doing a ratio of one to one. So I would clear that. Now my ratio can be tall or maybe I want to make a, a banner for a website that I have total control over how I crop my image. But I'm going to go back and I'm going to choose a one to one, which is one of the presets. It gives me a square and I'm just going to drag this out so I have a bigger square and I click inside to move it around. I can actually use the rule of thirds guidelines here to see that my horizon isn't perfectly straight. So here's another way to straighten a horizon. Hover outside of the crop. Notice your cursor will change to this left and right pointing arrow and then click. You're going to get a much smaller grid pattern and you just kind of visually rotate it, just visually align the horizon with one of those straight lines. If you can't tell, like you're having a hard time and you're having to waste a lot of time redoing it, if you're having trouble seeing it, just come up to view and turn on your rulers. See the rulers that populated across the top and the side? If you click inside the ruler and drag down, you'll drag down a guide that doesn't affect your image. It just gives you something to base something on. So now when I click outside my crop, I see my hard, horizon line with that blue line and then I can rotate it until it matches. I can let go. I can click inside my image to raise it up some if I want to or I can crop it a little more. Like I totally get to choose what part of this image I'm getting. I'm looking at the diagonal here and I'm thinking I like to have a bit more of that diagonal. I don't want my horizon in the middle of the screen so I've got to use a balance. Something like that. Click OK. I'll choose the move tool and I'll click on that guy and just drag it out of my way so it'll disappear. So now I have a straightened horizon and this has been cropped to square. And again, I'm just going to go up to file, save as, and I'll put SQ for square. Embed the color profile of sRGB and click save. Okay, that one's done. Yes! In this video, I wanted to give you a quick introduction into layers. Layers are one of the most powerful features in Photoshop. You'll usually find it in the far right bottom area of your Photoshop work screen right here. If you don't see a tab that says layers, just go up to window and put a check mark beside layers. Mine is already open. Layers let you control very discrete items. Let me come over to the text tool right here. This is the horizontal type tool. I'll click it and I'll just drag some text right there. It automatically loads with some Latin space holder. And I can click the color here and change that to red. Click OK. Click this check mark to accept it. So now I have a text layer. See how that works? And then what if, for whatever reason, I needed an adjustment layer to change the color? Maybe I wanted to make it sepia. Well, let me choose this hue and saturation adjustment layer right here. And notice it populated in the properties tab. And maybe I'm going to just use colorize, use a nice sepia and keep my saturation somewhere like that. Or maybe I want it more of a cyanotype, which is kind of a bluer look that works nicer with the red text. So now I have text layer and I can make it disappear and reappear by turning on and off this eyeball. So I can remind myself what a layer is if I forget because I've got 20 layers or 200 layers. I think you can have up to 4,000 layers in Photoshop. And then here's my color adjustment layer. Now watch this, in the layers panel we have control over how the layer interacts with the layer below it. Let me actually make that color a little crazy. Let me dial the saturation up to 100, which is way too much, right? But maybe, or maybe I'm going for more of a artistic or graphic design interpretation and that strong color cast is important. But let's say it is too much. All I have to do is lower the opacity and that's gonna let some of that background image through. A scrubby slider is when you hover over a word and your cursor changes to a left or right pointing arrow and you just drag it back and forth to vary the opacity which is very similar to just lowering the saturation. 
So I can lower the opacity, the strength of any layer. I can do it with this type layer. I can lower the opacity so it becomes more faded out so I can see the background through it. So this is your layers panel. And it is, again, it is super powerful for allowing you to adjust very specific things in your image. So I don't need this text layer. So I can just click and drag it to the trash and it'll get rid of it. I don't really need this adjustment layer. And actually, instead of clicking and dragging it to the trash, I can just click delete, but you gotta do it twice. I wanted to interrupt this regularly scheduled instructional video just to make sure I underlined the point of how you can delete a layer. Let me actually hit Command or Control J, duplicate that a couple times. I'll hover between the layers panel and this properties panel so that I can make my layers panel bigger. Here's the thing, I did cover, you can click and drag a layer to the trash and it will automatically delete it. If you have an adjustment layer where the layer mask is automatically chosen, I mean, so it is possible to manually choose the adjustment itself, but by default, the layer mask is chosen. And you can tell because it's the whole layer is selected because of the highlighted layer area here where it looks like a lighter gray. But you notice there are two things on this layer, the adjustment and the adjustment mask, which is this white square. It's most selected because it has these white corners. If I select this, this has the white corners. When you're trying to delete an adjustment layer, when you hit the delete key the first time, it will delete the mask. If you want to delete all of it, you've got to hit the delete key a second time, which is why I just said in the movie, you got to hit the delete key twice. But that's just for an adjustment layer. Because again, if I were to hit Command or Control J a couple of times to have two more layers up here that have no layer mask, I can just hit the delete key once and that layer is automatically deleted. I hope that helps. And actually, instead of clicking and dragging it to the trash, I can just click delete. But you got to do it twice and it will delete it. Command zero to fit in screen. And I'm back to the original image. Now, what I want you to do for this particular image is add a blank layer, which is down here in the bottom of your layers panel. It's going to add a transparent layer. You can tell by how small this, actually, that was a Freudian slip. I was just noticing my icons are small. I can change the appearance of my icons by clicking on these dialog lines over here in the layers panel, going down to panel options. And I'm just going to choose large thumbnail size. Click OK. Made these a lot bigger so you can see them better. You see how this is a transparent layer. Transparent layers are indicated by this white and gray checkerboard pattern all throughout Photoshop. Essentially, I want to get rid of this trash that's down here. Remember, you can hit that magnifying tool right here, the zoom tool, and click just to zoom in. Then I can hold the space bar down to temporarily turn my cursor into a hand to kind of move it around. So what I want to do is I want to retouch out this paper bag. I'm going to choose the spot healing brush, which is right here. And all you do is you paint over the subject and Photoshop will automatically get rid of it. You remember our technique. You can come up here, drop down arrow and change the size of this tool. Or you can just use the left and right bracket key. Left makes your brush smaller, right makes it bigger. So I'm going to paint that out. Now, if yours didn't work like this, it's probably because up here in the tool options bar, sample all layers wasn't checked. Whenever a tool isn't working, just look across the tool options bar and see what's going on. Because with sample all layers checked, it's going to look at that bottom background layer, but what it's doing, see, remember I'll turn that background layer off. See, it put the retouching in its own layer so I can mask it or do some other things to it if I need to. So now I can paint out like, well, maybe I don't like any of these dots. Maybe this little white thing's a little distracting. I'm going to hit Command or Control 1 to zoom to 100% because you really don't need to be more than 100% when you're retouching. Maybe I don't like that. Is there anything else I don't like? No, everything else looks looks good. I'm going to hit Command or Control 0. Okay, so I've retouched it. Now, and I can, lay, I can name my layer. The way you name it is double click on the word in the layer. You'll get this blue field and I'll type retouch. This way I can keep it orderly. This reminds me that if I turn this off, I can see what I've retouched. Notice the difference, how, how powerful that is. Basically, anything that you wouldn't put in the image yourself, consider removing it to tell a clearer story. Now, looking at this image photographically, I think this is too bright up here. I love the graphic elements. I love the strong visual of the diagonal line. I love that the face is in deep shadow. In this era of digital photography, where a lot of people teach, you've got to maintain maximum highlight detail and maximum shadow detail in every single image. I think it's good to try and make sure you have that detail recorded in your image file. If you know the look you're going for and you know you don't need shadow detail. I don't need to see his eyes. I'm, I want this to be more anonymous. I love the graphic elements in this image. Then let those shadow details just fall away to black. That's perfectly okay. But I think these highlight areas are a little bright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the adjustment layer. 
it looks like I don't have my full range of white tone. So I'll pull that in, but I'll pull my mid tones down. I guess it'd be somewhere in there. It's always a balance because because everything is getting adjusted. So now I have this layer. I can turn it on and off. And after I've done this, if I don't, if I still don't think I pulled down those lighter tones, come to the output slider instead and just pull down those lighter tones a touch. So now I can turn that on and off by toggling this eyeball on and off to see the effect. Yeah, that retouching is a necessity here. So if I want to save this with all of the work I've done, I will go up to file and save as. It's going to automatically make it a .psd, even though this image was originally a JPEG because it has layers. You can only save a file with layers as a Photoshop document. Side note, you can actually save it as a TIFF, but don't do that. I say don't do that because TIFF is primarily used for output to CMYK printing, like on giant printing presses. In today's market, you're either printing with uh, an online lab and you can still print great prints with a JPEG extension. And the .psd is just your best overall working extension because it allows you to open and save and rework and open and save and rework your images over and over and you never lose image quality. If you were to keep opening a JPEG, doing stuff to it, saving that JPEG, then opening that same JPEG up and re-manipulating it and re-saving it, you're actually losing image quality every time you do that because it's, it's a lossy compression extension, which is great for making a big file small, but it is not great for a file that you're going to be editing on and off over a long period of time. So that's why .psd is so great because you do not lose any image quality at all, no matter how many times you open it, work on it and save it. I wanna save all the layers, leave that checked. And this is totally fine. I know this image is never going to print and I'll click save. I already have a version of this. So it's saying, hey, you already have this file as a PSD. Are you sure you want to save this? And I'll say, yeah, sure, go ahead. So I just saved this as a .psd with these revisions, which you should too. You'll need it for the project. Take care. If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a lack it. Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. Huh. Whoa. Yes! <laughs> Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.